Hello everybody and welcome to That's Football Sack or Back. Don't worry, you're not in a Brazilian waxing salon. I think that's sack or crack. But we're here to talk about sack or back the manager. We're going to be talking about Frank Lampard and Graham Potter and maybe a few others as well. Uh, no Premier League fixtures this weekend, but lots to discuss. Everton knocked out of the FA Cup last night. Chelsea beaten by Man City the night before. Lots of discussions about whether it is time to back these managers or sack these managers. So I wanted to get your thoughts on it. Um, let's start off with Frank Lampard. Heard Conor Cody after the game saying they're fighting for the manager and last night was a better, better performance. Heard Frank Lampard saying that Marcus Rashford was unstoppable. Well, Marcus Rashford is playing very, very well at the moment, Frank, but your job is to stop him. I mean... I'm sorry if I'm an Everton fan, and ultimately it comes down to what Everton fans want because I'm not an Everton fan, but if I'm listening to Frank Lampard last night say Frank, um, that, that Marcus Rashford was unstoppable but it was a good performance, well, nah, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a difficult thing to figure out that Marcus Rashford might be the match winner. He's been brilliant over the last few weeks for United and uh, you know that, that's your job to stop that. You, I mean, is that not what the issue is here? managers coming out and just going wow it's not my fault well yeah what, what i'm supposed to do do your bloody job do your job and i tell you what i look at that league table and i for me it doesn't keep me awake at night whether frank lampard keeps his job or not but this is high-end entertainment if you go and watch a comedian and you don't think they're very good you won't go again um you might even heckle them if a manager is not doing a job for your club then you've got every right to say i want a better manager you know it's not a charity and my belief is, and I said it at the start of the season, that Lampard will go at some point and the sooner the better for Everton. But if you want to elongate it, that's up to you. But I look at that league table and I think it's completely unacceptable that after 18 games, Everton are in the bottom three. Um, and look, every manager and every fan base can moan about the owners. I mean, there's not many that don't. Oh, it's always the owners. And, and, and sometimes you're right. You know, I support Manchester United. Our owners are a joke. But, and unless you live it, people will go, well, you spent 200 million last summer. Yeah, you've got to live it to know what a joke they are. But Everton probably should have invested better. But I still look at that team and I think, well, why doesn't you get more out of those players? That that midfield of Anana, Idrissa Gay and Awobi is, is good enough to be in the mid-table. That defence with people like Conor Cody, Tarkovsky, Godfrey is good enough to be mid-table. Pickford plays for England. Um, well, we haven't, we haven't got a striker mark. Well... It's not always as simple as you need Ivan Toni or Mitrovic. And I've, I've purposely used Fulham and Brentford there because they're not fashionable teams, but they've got goal scorers. A lot of it comes down to coaching. If you create enough chances for Damari Gray or McNeil or Gordon or Morpé, they will score. The problem is Everton need a striker, but they also need to create more. They don't create much. Last 10 minutes of the FA Cup game with Manchester United, I was actually comfortable. 2-1 and I wasn't worried. Harry Maguire was on the pitch and I wasn't worried because I'm like, all Everton can do is actually a strength of Maguire. They're going to whip crosses in and he's good in the air. They're not going to get in behind because we're not going to let them counter. We've got the result. And that's, lo and behold, Everton created next to nothing. They don't create enough. So for all these people who think, well, Everton get a striker and you're going to win the league, you, you, you'll be fine. But you've still got to create. You don't create. You don't create, and that comes down to the coaching. So, look, maybe Lamp, they've got some winnable fixtures to come. Maybe you do back him and you stick with him, and, and possibly they will. Personally, I look at their recent performances, I look at their squad, and I think he's massively underachieving. And even if he manages to keep you up, it's another season, and at some point, you will sack him because he is not good enough, I don't think. So I would say sack whenever you want up to you i'm you know it's not my job to say sack him but i think it's going to be better for everton in the long run to do it and you're just delaying the inevitable and if you do win your next couple of games and then you lose your next four after that and you're back in a relegation battle you need to look back at now with a week off where you could have brought a manager in who gets a real you know kick start so i would say sack but there we go in relation to potter um, let's just change the league table so you can see the Potter situation. Because let's be honest, it's not great. It's not great for Chelsea to be in 10th position. But straight away, I mean, and you know I, I, you know what I'm going to say about Potter, but straight away, you are, yeah, Chelsea are 10th in the league. But one win takes you up to, is it 7th? Like if you win the game that you've got in hand on Brentford and uh, Fulham, then that takes you up to 28 points. Uh, I think Fulham may have a better goal difference. They, uh, maybe not if you win your game in hand. So... Look, Chelsea probably are about seventh best in the league at the moment. Um, obviously, Brighton would have something to say about that. 
Um, funnily enough, that's the club you got Potter from. But I, I genuinely look at Chelsea and I think that that is just not a good job for anybody to take on. And it's definitely a job that you've got to be looking at next season. Now, fans, again, Chelsea fans, it's your club. You've got every right to be impatient. Of course you have. But I think it says a lot about somebody's football knowledge if they're looking at it and saying sack Potter because no manager is coming in and getting you top four. So why would you sack him? What you have in Potter is, and what you've got to do with Potter is say, what have you got? You've got a manager that is very exciting, is a very developmental coach and can get a team built that performs consistently for him if he's got the right team around him. And he did that at Brighton. And people say, well, we did it at Brighton. Is it not harder to do it at Brighton with a restricted budget when you're still competing against Man City, Liverpool, everybody each season? So, yeah, it's different to manage a big club because there's bigger expectations. But he was consistent with Brighton, who were a smaller club, who still play the same teams that Chelsea are going to play. So, But 100%, if you bring Potter in, you've got to give him 18 months. You have to. Otherwise, why give him the job? So sacking him now would be preposterous. It would be stupid because whoever you bring in is going to need 18 months because they're not going to get your top four this year and then you've got to give them next year. So it would be completely ridiculous to appoint a manager that's going to need 18 months, look at his CV, to sack him to bring another manager in who will need 18 months. So straight away, why would you sack him? Makes no sense. Well, we shouldn't have sacked Tuchel. Tuchel sacked himself. If you speak to people in the know, Tuchel sacked himself. He didn't like the way the new ownership was going. He fell out with a few of the players. Tuchel sacked himself. And he got backed in the summer as well, and the results weren't there. Potter comes into the club after the summer transfer window, inherits a mess, inherits a team that spent a load of money on players for Tuchel. Fafana, Koulibaly, Sterling, Cucurella. There's £200 million there. £200 million spent, and you've got to use them, and you didn't buy them. So straight away, you're inheriting a lot of new signings with expectation that you didn't buy. No striker as well brings a Bamiang in. Problem as well. Injuries, ridiculous. They've basically got a better team that's injured than they have their starting 11 at the moment. No pre-season to get your team playing a very different way to Tuchel. The way Potter plays football, very different to Tuchel. You inherit players who've had a pre-season based on Tuchel and now you're trying to get them to play a different way. So he's had no signings, no pre-season, a load of injuries, and people are saying he's not good enough. And I'm like, do people understand how hard it is to manage a Premier League football club? Especially when you've got no pre-season, no signings and loads of injuries. And a team that's 100% going through transition. For me, Potter has to stay. The results could get worse. I'm not going to say it's just going to get better for you. It could get worse. And the reason it could get worse is because of the things I've just said. Transition, injuries, no transfer window, no pre-season. January's not going to solve that. You might get a couple of good players in, but the January transfer window is not the summer transfer window because there's more available in the summer transfer window. You've got a pre-season and you've got time. January is not going to magic all the injuries back. January is not going to give him a pre-season and January is not going to give him all the signings he wants. So I don't actually think things will get better for Chelsea necessarily. It could be a season where you win nothing and you finish 7th or 8th. But that's not a reason to sack the manager if you use your brain and look at why you're in this position. And you know why you're in this position? 100% there's a few people to blame. Having to sell the club, that's still a rip, you know, a massive ripple. Bad signings in the summer. The Tuchel thing was a disaster from everybody. And Potter's there to try and pick up the pieces. And it's not an easy uh, jigsaw to solve. Especially when you've got a rejuvenated Arsenal, rejuvenated Manchester United. Man City are very good. Liverpool, you know they're going to be there. Newcastle. There's five clubs straight away. Five clubs. And Spurs are pretty sort of Spursy around fourth, fifth and sixth. So there's six clubs in a better position than you straight away. So Chelsea seventh probably is realistic in a transitional season anyway. So I think Chelsea fans just need to get a bit realistic about where you are. It's not nice. Everybody's got the right to be impatient, but it's very understandable where you are. So for me, keep Potter. Keep Potter, definitely. Get your comments in below. Let me know what you think. Smash a like and subscribe. Um, I'll speak to you on the next one. And uh, I'm really enjoying doing these videos. I hope you are as well. And uh, make sure you get involved. Speak to you all in a bit.